Okay. So good af afternoon and a very warm welcome to Kate Downey who is one of our fantastic artists in Modern Masters Women and it's a delight to be in your studio in Fife whilst I'm in Edinburgh uh, for this Meet, Meet the Artist uh, afternoon. I know that we're all experiencing a little bit of Wi-Fi issues. Um, at any time during this talk, if you want to look at Kate full screen, if you go up to Kate's, if you put your finger onto the screen or your cursor, you can, you, there's, a, there's a drop box and it'll tell you that you can make Kate go full screen because she is in her studio. There's lots of fabulous information there. We've got this great PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to give a bit of background on Kate Downey before I hand you over to, to Kate. So Kate was born in America of British parentage but returned to live in the northeast of Scotland at the age of seven. She studied at, at the Fine Art of, at Gray's School of Art, Aberdeen, graduating in 1980. She has taken part in art, artist residencies in the USA, Amsterdam, Paris, and more recently Corsica and Norway. During her career, Downey has established studios in places as diverse as a brewery, a maternity hospital, an oil rig, and an island underneath the fourth rail bridge. Her ongoing relationship with the Fourth Bridges was made manifest six years ago when she was selected as official resident artist for the Fourth Road Bridge during its 50th anniversary in 2014. As president of the Society of Scottish Artists from 2004 to 2006, Kate co-curated contemporary visual art projects of international standing, including an exchange exhibition with Indian artists and the Body Parts Live Live Art Festival at the RSA in Edinburgh. Like the Scottish artists Joan Erdley and D.Y. Cameron in the last century, Downey has spent the past 25 years exploring an artistic vision for both the extremes of a Scottish urban and industrial landscape and Scotland's coastal edgescapes. She is now exploring a more conceptual approach to the secret world of plants and trees over time and how they impact on our lives. Downey's work appears in many public and corporate collections worldwide. In 2005, Kate was shortlisted for the Gerwood Drawing Prize and in 2008 became a member of the Royal Scottish Academy. Kate Downey is currently Chair of Friends and Development for the RSA, where she has recently been hosting a series of countrywide live at the Academician Studio events via Zoom. Kate has been represented by the Scottish Gallery for many years and has had several solo exhibitions since 2007. In 2017, she created Anatomy of Haste for our festival exhibition and we look forward to her next exhibition, Between Seasons, in June 2021. Kate lived and worked in Edinburgh for many years and recently relocated to Fife, where she is today. And she now has is sitting inside her beautiful purpose-built studio. I realise that that is your life, which is huge. The achievements condensed into a very short period of time. Kate, it's a joy to have you here today. I'm going to switch off my camera and hand over to you. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, it's really strange. I know you're out there, but I can't see you. So I just have to kind of imagine you. And um, just to say that I'm really missing a live audience. This is all very good, but um, it's just not the same. Um, but it is great that no one has to travel at the moment because that's so hard, especially from the floods in Fife last night as well. Um, Christina, could you give me the first slide? Um, no, the back one? Oops. That's me. Good. Great. <laughs> so here I am. Here I am twice, which is a bit over the top. It's too much for me. Um, this is um, a slide, a, a really um, interesting picture taken by the photographer Alicia Bruce, who is an amazing young portrait photographer um, and artist in her own right. And she came to my studio um, about six months ago and uh, took this photo in the late winter light. Um, I got the studio was completed only a year ago go or 13 months ago and I spent an enormous amount of time in it. Um, I left Edinburgh um, two years ago because I simply needed more space and, um, and now I have it and I have an enormous garden and it's taken me a while to get used to being to country life if I'm being really honest. Um, can you forward it to the next slide please Christina? Um, 
the last exhibition I had at the Scottish Gallery was called Growing Forms and it was based around the development of my studio and here it is in the process of being built and you can see what an amazing space it, it is um, it looks a bit more cluttered than that now um, and so it was a combination of growing plants around me and the studio growing and so the actual construction became the source of my recent some of my recent work next slide next slide christina um, and here's a uh, uh, back one back one thank you <laughs> uh, oh, it's quite hard to control um yeah here's some you want sorry christina is that okay yeah, do you want me to go back? Nope, that's fine. This is just a very, um, a couple images from that. I'm just going to try and move my own face out of the way so I don't have to look at myself too much. That's great. Um, and you can see we've got um, bits of Edinburgh, bits of Fife and bits of cucumber plant. Last year I was completely obsessed with cucumber, a cucumber vine that just went rampant in my sitting room. So you can see that over here. Can you see, can people see a cursor there? I'm not sure. Um, in the left hand picture. And then, oh yeah, there, that's it. Those are two forms of my cucumber growing forms. And here on the right hand side, is a picture of the building site for the St. James's Centre. And these were the cranes growing up. And, and this was kind of the ground zero, as it were, before they built the St. James Centre, after they'd taken the old, rather, they'd taken the St. James Centre down and they were building whatever it is they've got now in its place. Um, and you can see uh, also pictures of the studio coming up, coming to fruition. Um, here is a wide angle picture um, of my space and it makes the paintings look quite small as you can see but I've got light coming in from every single direction and different views from different directions and I actually I'm, I'm next month or in October I'm going to start uh, teaching a little bit from this space and I, I also have micro residencies of visiting artists from different countries um, or local artists who simply need a week to finish their practice-based PhD or to create an addition of prints or whatever they need. So it's become a really good collaborative space as well, which is very exciting. Um, last year I had uh, two Chinese artists who I am working on a project with uh, and we all went to Mull together and then came back and made an enormous amount of uh, ink painting here as well. Next slide, please. However, things during lockdown changed for all of us, didn't they? And um, the way that things changed here was that um, I went and evacuated my mum from her tenement flat in Glasgow and myself and my partner brought her back to Ceres, which is the village I'm in now. Um, she is 94 and she's pretty blind and very deaf and she has some dementia and confusion and um, she was just far too vulnerable. And like many others, um, I, the, the thought of her being alone in the flat, even with part-time carers or people she didn't know, was just going to be too isolating. So she became part of our bubble. Um, she makes art in her own right, or used to rather, until about 10 years ago, uh, maybe five, 10 years ago. And we created a series of uh, works called what I call um, parallel painting. And each of these images, if you can see behind us, um, I don't know if, can, can you move on to the next one, Christina? Oh no, back one, back one. Okay, so each of those are little paired images. So I would draw her and she would draw me, or we'd both draw a bowl of bananas, or whatever, or vase of flowers. Very simple things. None of these little paintings lasted for more than sessions, for more than 10, 15 minutes, because that's all the time she can really focus for. But it gave me a huge insight into how her sight was diminishing with macular degeneration and also the difficulties of comprehending what she saw. So it was, a, it was my way of both kind of looking after her but taking her to a place where doing things that we both enjoyed which was a very good way of passing the time it's not easy for being a carer in these situations for anyone okay next slide please 
But after a while, she got really, um, she really took off and she started drawing independently, which was wonderful. And she used the door of the toilet in my studio, which I painted with blackboard paint. And then each day she would, and we would talk about a selection of different colors with Unison Pastel, which is anyone who out there who's ever used them <clears throat> will know what an amazing pigment quality they have. And some of the work was incredibly exciting and abstract, and yet it always had some foundation to something that was going on in her mind. Uh, so I, I treasured these uh, wall drawings. Working with pieces of paper made her feel quite insecure. And she, I, I discovered that we both have in common is we both like to draw big, which is wonderful. Next slide, please. Meanwhile, while mum was working on the door, I um, got going with um, a printmaking project um, called Compassionate Hands. And it's kind of a project I started thinking about over winter. And I started, I, do, I was doing so much gardening, I started collecting on and keeping all my old gardening gloves. And um, when lockdown happened, I became very um, interested in the role of caring and of touch and all the things that in lockdown we've been so denied about human touch and thinking about um people with their ppe and how the gloves that printmaking <laughs> as a printmaking i wear are very similar to the gloves that are worn by in hospitals and uh, people started posting me their wonderful worn out gardening gloves with whole lists of all the work and the months of um planting and garden work they'd done with them so it became a kind of caring diary of tending and caring and uh, yeah and here you see some of the results and i know they're not really typical of my generally of the work that some of you may know me for with my drawings um but what was weird during lockdown was i found it incredibly hard to draw i think we were all so kind of freaked out by what was going on that I had to find a language that I felt comfortable with and still a way of expressing myself. So these, as you can see, um, there's a combination of gloves and plants. And each day with my partner, myself, and maybe pushing mum in a wheelchair, uh, we would collect um, wild flowers and they would, um, they would become incorporated. Uh, you see this one here, up here, uh, Christina, a top right corner, you can see the dock leaf and the nettle. Uh, left one, left a bit, that's it, that one there. And one on the other side. Um, so I, as a child, I always loved the relationship with dock leaves and nettles and how the nettle stings and the dock leaf heals. You know, I was, I was a kid always rubbing my nettle stings with juicy dock leaves in the hope that it really helped and it seemed like a kind of good metaphor for that sense of nurture and of of um you know being caught you know that awful fear of um covid and then the way that a big dock leaf was almost like wanting to wrap itself around and look after any pain and distress so you know these were strange times and it, the work kind of reflects it, but it's very, it felt quite poetic for me to make these and really cathartic. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you, you know, I carve um, Chinese seals um, out of a sort of Chinese soapstone. And for this, I made a little hand print. Um, and for every edition of prints or, or drawings that I do, I carve a new seal now. and. In 2000 and, I don't know, 13, I went over and I studied seal carving in Beijing, which was really amazing, quite difficult, but really good thing to learn to do. Uh, next slide, please. That series of print kind of led on in, in June, my, my mum went back to Glasgow and full-time carers started looking after her and my other wonderful siblings started taking over the care of my mum. So I got a little bit more time and I very much wanted to take part in the wonderful Artist Pledge um, project, which many of you I'm sure have supported or, or taken part in. And I created um, this series of a variable edition, uh, and these are dry point etching and sheen collet with a new seal. And if you look on the right hand side of this picture, you'll see a close up of what I call the COVID seal. 
So that's my, it's only tiny. It's just about one centimeter square, maybe less. So that gives you, and if you look at there, I'm busy signing the prints and stamping them with the seal. So there's actually three forms of print in each of these pieces. And these were sold with the idea being that you create a print that's under 200 pounds and um, artists do it. They sell direct via Instagram and Facebook. And when they reach a thousand pounds, they immediately invest 200 pounds of that money in work by another artist. And I really like this scheme because it was rather than artists being seen as um, vulnerable or, or, or so on and victims in this, um, you know, economic, difficult economic times, there was a very active um, lot of stuff going on and I didn't want to just sell off little pieces of work I actually wanted to make something that's about these times and this series is called um, Root Metaphor in Covid Times and you can see that um, the little the growing trees have become the roots and the dead trees or the winter trees have become the up you know the upper um, upper form and yet I've removed all the land, all the horizon lines, everything. And we're just left with these, these trees. And for me, it was that sense that above ground, we were all in limbo. You know, that sense when winter trees are kind of held and they're waiting and waiting and waiting for growth to happen. And I felt like in these times we were sort of thinking about things and planning things and that all the growth was hidden a bit like the underground the implied underground trees and I had a really good time sort of exploring uh, the dead trees of Fife and uh, in my locality I would cycle out and find new dead trees because there's always trees growing trees dying and so on and uh, Anyway, so this, this series um, was very successful. I've sold most of them and I bought all sorts of artwork. I bought a painting and I bought earrings from other artists, which is wonderful. Um, but what's amazing, oh, here we've got um, some close-ups of them. So you can see the variety. Um, underneath there's a, a pollard oak, there's a willow, and there's, I'm not sure what the one on the right is. And then there's, there's, I think that's a hawthorn on the left. Um, but really, I'm not quite sure when I'm caught like this looking at them. Okay, next slide, please. I just took this photo yesterday, and this is a note from my sketchbook um, of a, the project that's kind of led on from my root metaphor project. And I decided that I wanted to move out of printmaking again. I finally, after all these months, feel ready to do some serious drawing and serious painting again, which is about time. Um, it's been rather difficult, I guess. Um, and I am furiously, at this moment in time, making large ink paintings of trees in full leaf. Um, anyone who knows me knows I hardly ever draw trees in full leaf, though I love trees. Um, I just find it too kind of amorphous and difficult but now I have this project where I'm actually searching for beautiful or significant or important trees to me ones that have my a narrative either my narrative or somebody else's or a historical narrative and I am going to be revisiting them again in six months time in midwinter and these will form the basis of very large huge paintings on Fife linen um, and it, the exhibition will be launched in June at the Scottish Gallery and it will be called Between Seasons and it's called that because rather I'm kind of well known for traveling in space you know I do a lot of traveling I did past tense um, I'm very interested in modes of transports and bridges and roads and so on but now we're all forced more to travel in time than travel in space so this um, this series is about not just the two trees, one painted six months apart from the other between summer and winter, but this very, very interesting space that cuts between right down the middle. And that is our weird compressed space that we are inhabiting at the moment. And uh, so I'm going to find a different way of expressing time with these works. I mean, I don't know exactly how they're going to come out, but I'm really excited about doing them. So anyway, next slide, please. Uh, just in case you thought I, I've suddenly done this mad switch from uh, transport um, 
infrastructure to trees. This is a painting called Para um, Estuary Life, and that's from my estuary exhibition. Um, that's the uh, that's the catalogue there from 2015. And where I was traveling in Australia and Japan, looking at estuaries and bridges and all sorts of amazing places. And this is um, looking out onto the Parramatta at, in Sydney and basically celebrating people's backyards and the jacaranda and the frangipani tree, these glorious purple flowers. Okay, next slide, please. And this is just a little shot from. I think, Christina, that is the um, anatomy, anatomy of haste. That is definitely anatomy of haste. <laughs> I'm glad you know. <laughs> you've, got, yeah. you've, got, you've got all the construction works in, in the yellow on that back wall. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's um, from one of my Chinese paintings. And that's, uh, yeah. That's called China Erections, because they're busy erecting skyscrapers over the mountains and the bridges. Um, yeah, I still got that painting. I love it. Anyway, um, you know, I might say that about your own paintings, but that's one of my stranger ones and very much influenced by techniques I learned with ink painting, uh, which then got transferred into oil painting, which is, I mean, if I had not studied ink painting, I would not be the artist I am now, to be honest. And uh, next slide. Aha, there we go. There's um, three of my solo shows at the Scottish Gallery. Um, I think that there's only catalogues left from one of those, isn't there, Christina? Yeah, Anatomy of, of Haste. I mean, e even, even with that, they're, they're looking pretty low. You make fabulous publications. It's because- Well, you guys make them, I don't make them. Well, you do actually. <laughs> you, t you tell us what we want and we know that it's always going to be creative. Um, so they're, they're beautiful things which people respond to as an object in its own right. Um, well. I just wish we'd printed more of the other ones, but you never know, do you? <laughs> you, ne you never know, that's the thing. Um, that's true, yeah. But no, it's such a pleasure um, to have it. And here is um, another view of the anatomy of haste. And we have two paintings, one from Tokyo and one from Kyoto, two Japanese paintings. And in the far left, we have that little tiny triptych on birch panel when I was actually watching the Queen's Ferry crossing being built. So it was kind of underneath it. It was scary, but very exciting. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't, I was actually, uh, next slide please. Yeah, but I wasn't actually, although I draw the new crossing quite a bit, my proper job in 2014 was artist in residence for the 50th anniversary of the building of the fourth road bridge, the one you see in these pictures. So the etching on the left is about a meter wide and it's called um, the art of crossing. So, which is often my take on bridges. It's about the act of movement of going from one body of land to the next and how that feels. Uh, so it's got the two bridges there. Um, they were busy building the third. Uh, the picture on the right is called the winter commute and um, this is a laser cut uh, image from a photograph I took. It's a very tricky technique to ink up this um, piece of laser cut wood and then print it on top of a, an individually hand printed monoprint. Um, and they're, they're about a meter wide as well. So yeah, they're very kind of spooky, but I wanted to kind of, again, get the sense of what it was like to cross the bridge every day, in, especially in winter when the sun's still rising. Next slide, please. This is a, a very different atmosphere of the road bridge. And that's because I wanted to really pull in some of my ink painting techniques into um, bridge drawing. And that's quite contradictory in a way because there's a lot less control. And this is taken from uh, North Queens Ferry, which is a village I am very, very fond of because it sits between the two bridges and has a very, and also being the place of ferry crossing, it has a huge significance of, for people's lives and its history is very rich. Also the role of uh, rescue boats. You can see the little bit of red picks up from my Chinese carved seals with my name. And then this little rescue boat where, where which is, got red in it as well. The, the, 
the business of there's a whole community industry tourism everything happens on the Firth of Forth and I think when I first moved to Edinburgh I my very first exhibition in Edinburgh was called Coastlines and it was a festival exhibition an embarrassing amount of time ago I think it was 1985 god I've been an artist for a long time it's ridiculous anyway so so I've always explored the Forth and all the ch amazing changing environments around it. And, and the brilliant thing about moving to Fife is I'm still only six and a half miles from the Forth of Forth as the crow flies. If I go straight line from here um, due south, I fall out at uh, Lower Largo, London Lynx on the Leaven Bay. Next slide, please. Um, this image I created initially for the estuary exhibition and it's of the Story Bridge in Brisbane and this is painted on Chinese paper and this piece of paper got dragged around Australia with me, huge piece of paper, until I found the perfect subject and uh, so I just love the shape of the bridge and I, the fact it was called the story bridge because I know there's always a story behind everything. I have no idea what the story is of this bridge but I just loved it and I like the way that the whole city was built around it and the way that the Brisbane River kind of serp it was like a serpentine shape that just wound its way through the city and people jumped on and off ferries back and forth on bridges they really owned the river which which i love in a city next slide please uh, back to scotland um just to show you how active it was being an artist in residence on the right hand side i'm busy climbing one of the towers of the fourth bridge on the left hand side christina you'll recognize this one won't you Yes, I own it. I have it in my house. It's lovely. You have one of them indeed. You can see there's an edition of 12 um, and this print is called Don't Draw and Drive. And the, more, the very first morning at 6 a.m. when they opened the new bridge, before it was officially opened, but it was open to traffic, I jumped in the car in Edinburgh when I was living there and drove over with a little piece of paper on my lap and a soft pencil. And as, as I drew, as I drove and approached the bridge, I kind of scribbled a few lines. Um, and it was a bit, not a good thing to do. So I thought it was best to warn people not to do that. Um, however, I made it into dry point etching. And because my exhibition was currently showing at that time at the Scottish gallery, I decided they all deserved a commemorative print for being so wonderful and looking after me in the gallery. Um, next slide. Um, and here is a painting which is in the show at the moment. And this is also based on that experience of that early morning experience, but a bit more um, evolved as a studio work. Um, and it's called New Day Crossing. So again, it's that act of approaching the bridge. The, the Queen's Ferry Crossing is a very tricky bridge to draw actually. Next one, please. Um, this is a video that probably will not make a sound. Is that right, Christina? I think that's right. It's so disappointing, but it, universally, so I feel quite, I don't feel an idiot about this. There seems to be a problem with showing film on Zoom, which is that it, it, it just remains silent. And in fact, when we test, tested this earlier on, I could hear you and it moved, but now it's, it's not, it's just you looking Hysterical. There on the slightly hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you play it, I'll talk, okay? Um, I'm just gonna see what I can do, yeah. Okay, here I am talking to Tommy Jiv, who is currently, as many of you will know, cycling on the North Coast 500. And I decided that for Tommy and Davey doing their fundraising thing, I would get um, have a printmaking performance on the bridge, which we did with a team of wonderful helpers um, and a filmmaker who's making a film about Tommy and Davy's journey. And basically I made up a special black, which I inked up onto a piece of foam core and then asked the boys to cycle through the black ink and um, print their bicycle tires onto good quality lining paper, which they, which will then be turned into a monoprint. I haven't finished them yet, but uh, actually, Michael, if you pass me that roll of um, paper, I'll probably find it over there. I have my helpful partner. Um, here you can see the two, the two lads and after they um, cycled through the ink, um, no, it's the big one. 
after they cycled through the ink, um, I got them to get off and sign it. Um, so our signature will be on all three of them. I have here a very piece of paper. Let's see if I can find. This is maybe a bit crazy. Oh yeah, here we go. Can you see? This is their yes. real life bicycle uh, tire prints. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I love printmaking and um, I thought they might get bored just sitting still on the bridge in the howling wind. It was quite warm, mind you, um, waiting for me to finish drawing them. So I thought it was much more fun to get them to cycle over um, a printing panel. So hopefully um, we're, I'm gonna create some um, three unique prints for sale and all the proceeds are going to go into their fundraising for motor neuron disease. So that's what that's about. Um, but it's always good to have a relationship with both um, the Scottish Gallery and the Bridges. So that's cool. <laughs> and, to and Tommy says a big hello to you today. They they completed their first day of the tour. Fantastic. Phew. It, it, seemed, it seemed very easy. I, I was really concerned with the weather. Um, yeah. but, but so so far, so good. And they're so grateful uh, for, for you taking this oh, project on. Oh. I had a lot of fun, I'm, honestly. You, you, I don't look sad, do I? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's us at the and end. And I know that that's not a very that's not an interesting slide at the end. So we'll leave it with with Tommy. Uh, we we can't wait for for your exhibition next year. Um, and yeah. thank you, thank you so much for that, Kate. That was just amazing. I, I'm just going to explain to the audience here that um, Christina didn't have a clue about what the exhibition was going to be about um, until I explained it to all of you. So they were none the wiser either. So I quite like springing surprises on the gallery, but they tend to roll with it, which is just as well. Well, I tell you, uh, Tommy and I were having, um, we were discussing your PowerPoint presentation last week and we were looking through your folders. I, I mean, it's just, we've got fantastic material. You've probably got loads and loads, but it's it's so exciting for us. There was, there was, um, you know, there was the Orkney studio of Sylvia Wishart. There was previous projects that you, I mean, you've done so much, Kate. And so we were, we just thought, well, gosh, well, this is just a, this is a microcosm of, of a huge career. It's so joyful to look I've over, been, I've over been your alive past. a long time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. We like you being alive for a long time. But, and you, you just get better and better. If, 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 if people haven't made an appointment to see the exhibition yet, you should definitely come and see it. And obviously we are looking forward. It's people like Kate Downey that lift us. I mean, you are so articulate. Um, not everyone can be as articulate as you are about the lockdown. I, I mean, it's just so poetic. Mm. I know that you couldn't make a film at the time because we'd asked people for films. We knew that everyone was in a tricky situation. We were in a tricky situation. And it was just words and pictures of you and your mother. It was so moving. We had such extraordinary feedback. Mm. And every time we speak to you, you don't, you don't need help. Um, we obviously wanted to help you today, but this is the whole joy of the Modern Masters Women, which is having a powerful individual like yourself who's so articulate, so involved, so engaged, loves other people's art, and that you continue to give us art. Kate Downey, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Oh, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure.